As we all know, the space race between China and the US has been going on for many years. Although Elon Musk's request for a large subsidy for his Starlink project was rejected by the US Federal Communications Commission, if Musk's Starlink plan is allowed to develop, he may be able to occupy 70% of the near-Earth satellite pit by launching 42,000 satellites by 2025. There are two extreme views on Musk's Starlink project, either he is a big liar and the plan is impossible to achieve, or he is Iron Man and can do anything, and Starlink can directly surpass 5G and move towards 6G. So, based on the facts, let's discuss rationally what the relationship between Starlink and 5G technology is and whether it will directly replace 5G. Okay, let's get started. First, the Starlink project will have a total of 45,000 mini-satellites, what can they do? Obviously, it is impossible for Starlink to provide free internet access. So, let's go back to the fifth-generation mobile communication network, 5G, which is just one of the functions of mobile communication. Starlink is actually just a network and has nothing to do with mobile communication. We need to know that the Starlink plan is to deploy 45,000 low-orbit satellites in space to provide network services to the world. The two are completely different and cannot be compared. If we have to compare, let's not talk about the world's population of 7.4 billion and just focus on China. If Starlink is to replace 5G, then let's compare it with China's current 4G. At least China's 4G is cheap and abundant. So, China currently has 1.28 billion mobile users. What can 45,000 mini satellites do? How much bandwidth does each of these satellites in space need to provide services? Divide 1.28 billion by 45,000, which equals 28,440. So, these Chinese people cannot even watch 4K or 8K high definition videos, let alone streaming videos or playing games. It is difficult to even use Facebook, not to mention in densely populated areas. China has more than 5.4 million 4G base stations, the US only has more than 300,000 4G base stations, and China built 1.73 million new 4G base stations in 2019. The number of 5G base stations in China in the future will start at tens of millions. Even if Starlink only serves the American people, the number of American internet users in 2017 was 245 million. Therefore, these 45,000 small satellites cannot do anything. Therefore, in my opinion, the Starlink project cannot replace 5G. 2.Cellular communication has too many advantages, and I cannot think of any reason why it would be eliminated by the Starlink project. In my opinion, the advantage of satellite communication is more likely to lie in stable global coverage, providing supplementary coverage for oceans and remote areas that cellular communication cannot cover, and is unlikely to pose a substantial threat to cellular communication. Commercial wireless communication technology, from 1G to 4G, and to future 5G, all follow a rule, that is, the coverage range of the base station becomes smaller and the base station density becomes higher. This method is intuitive, if the coverage range of the base station is reduced and the coverage density is increased, the communication distance between user devices and base stations will be reduced, so under other conditions being equal, the path loss of the signal will decrease, making the signal strength at the receiving end better. Moreover, in the case of unchanged user density, the number of users accessing the same base station will also decrease, so each user will receive better service. However, satellite communication completely contradicts this method, and the communication distance is several orders of magnitude worse than that of cellular communication. For example, Motorola's Iridium project tried to launch 66 satellites into a high orbit of 780 kilometers, which is farther than the distance from Shanghai to Taipei. And the limited capability of satellite communication means that the number of users and rates that can be supported is extremely limited, while the cost is very high. Similarly, SpaceX's Starlink project plans to cover the world with 12,000 satellites. Although the number is much higher than the 66 of the Iridium project, it even exceeds the total number of all satellites currently launched by humans. Even so, the average area that each satellite needs to cover is still roughly equivalent to three Beijing areas, 
One satellite can cover and serve such a large area and users, which means that the utilization efficiency and reuse rate of the frequency spectrum will be very low. This also means that the service rate will be very low. And due to the greatly increased communication distance, the energy efficiency and service delay of user terminal equipment will also be poor. Moreover, due to the limitation of user mobile devices, their communication power will not be too high, usually much lower than the power of satellites. Therefore, the rate of uplink communication for users, that is, the rate of sending information from mobile phones to satellites, is even more difficult to guarantee. You can see from the large antenna of the satellite phone that even if the antenna is made so large, the communication rate is still very low, only supporting low-rate voice services, usually below 10 kilobits per second. Remember, the communication rate and distance are always inversely proportional, even in free space propagation, the electromagnetic signal will experience 1 meter more attenuation for every additional meter it travels. 5G is indeed powerful, but its coverage distance is also reduced by nearly 50% compared to 4G, and the range for enjoying high-speed internet under a 5G base station is only about 300 meters. It's not that it cannot be used beyond this range, but the rate drops exponentially. Don't forget, Starlink is in outer space. Therefore, compared with satellite communication, cellular communication has too many advantages, can serve more users at a much lower cost, and provide better service quality. Therefore, I can't think of a reason why it would be phased out by the Starlink project. 3. 5G is evolution, while Starlink is a fundamental change in network usage. In fact, Starlink mainly changes the functionality of 5G. As the United States has a vast territory with a sparse population, the cost of deploying 5G base stations is very high. But why do I despise Starlink so much? It is because our usage scenarios for 5G are still primarily limited to personal mobile phones. In this scenario, Starlink has significant shortcomings, and its primary scenario is not even for personal use. In fact, 5G is not even primarily for personal consumption. Of course, when it comes to industry, Starlink has significant advantages. It does not require you to lay fiber optic cables and construct a bunch of base stations on high plateaus, nor does it require base station relay transmission. It can be built with the simplest mode, in areas such as high plateaus, islands, and deserts, where humans cannot survive but where energy, water, heat, wind, etc., is easily obtainable, and completely unmanned factories can be built without considering the problem of pulling wires. In this regard, Starlink is actually part of Elon Musk's future Martian colonization technology package. Overall, 5G is an evolution of 4G, while Starlink is a revolution, a real change in network usage patterns. In short, in the foreseeable future, the Starlink communication system cannot replace 5G. In my opinion, the two are not in competition but complementary. For example, a certain cruise company purchases Starlink services for its cruise ships, providing passengers with 5G services. However, passengers cannot possibly have a set of Starlink antennas at hand and squeeze onto the open deck to connect directly to the Starlink network. Their phones, tablets, or laptops can only access the ship's intranet via 5G or Wi-Fi and then connect to the internet through Starlink's gateway. It can be seen that from a purely commercial perspective, Starlink communication is just a supplement to the existing traditional mobile communication layout. Moreover, someday the Starlink in the sky and the 5G on the ground will gradually merge into an organic, integrated communication system. Therefore, let us not always view everything with the struggle mindset of you die, I live. Isn't Starlink plus 5G slash Wi-Fi a good choice for occasions such as cruise ships, airplanes, trains, islands, mountainous areas, wilderness camps, towns or villages lacking infrastructure, and so on? Well, thanks for watching. If you have any suggestions, just leave them in the comments section. We'll come back as soon as possible and check them, and then we'll give feedback. See you next time.